Made famous in America during the Battle of the Bulge in 1944-45, and later from the HBO miniseries Band of Brothers, the Screaming Eagles of the 101st Airborne Division have been a source of pride in American military history. But the story of the Screaming Eagles doesn't begin in the 1940s, but rather the 1860s, with a company of Union soldiers from Wisconsin during the American Civil War. In the spring of 1861, Agamawegehetzik, also known as Chief Sky, of the Lac du Flambeau Ojibwe tribe in Wisconsin, felled a tree containing two small eaglets he intended to capture. Unfortunately, one of the eaglets was killed when the tree came down. Chief Sky kept the surviving eaglet only a few months until he traded it for a bushel of corn to Daniel McCann. McCann cared for the young eagle only a few months himself before he met a group of newly recruited Union soldiers from Eau Claire, Wisconsin, nicknamed the Badgers. McCann offered to sell the eagle to the soldiers for $2.50, and after some haggling and collections amongst themselves, the Eau Claire men purchased a new mascot, whom their captain, Captain John Perkins, named Old Abe, in honor of President Abraham Lincoln. Old Abe was sworn into United States service, and in recognition of the occasion, a red, white, and blue rosette was placed around his neck. The event captured the attention of a reporter from the Eau Claire Free Press, which told its readers that, quote, The Eau Claire Badgers are going into battle under the protective aegis of the veritable American Eagle. Who could not fight under such glorious emblems? A perch was constructed, and James McGinnis was assigned to care for and carry Old Abe around with the company. Two Eau Claire women thought Old Abe's perch could do with some additional patriotism, and so made and attached two small American flags that hung down on the right and left arms of the perch. As autumn approached, the Eau Claire men joined other Wisconsin men to form the 8th Wisconsin Volunteer Infantry Regiment, and were appropriately called Eagle Company. Old Abe's fame quickly grew, and soon the whole regiment was called the Eagle Regiment. Before departing south to join the front lines of the Western Theater of War, Old Abe received an upgraded perch. The new perch consisted of a long pole intersected by a heart-shaped shield, painted with the stars and stripes. Above the shield was the crossbar upon which Old Abe sat. From each side of the crossbar emanated three arrows pointing outward. In early October 1861, Old Abe paraded through the streets of Chicago, proudly sitting upon his perch next to the regimental colors. The Chicago Tribune wrote, quote, A notable feature among them was the Chippewa Eagles, Captain Perkins's company, a company of the first class, stalwart fellows. The live eagle which they brought with them was an object of much curiosity. He is a majestic bird and well-trained. When marching, the eagle is carried at the head of the company, at the top of a pole. They swear it shall never be taken by the enemy. No doubt, the Chippewa Eagles and their pet bird will be heard of again. End quote. From Chicago, Old Abe and Eagle Company headed south to Missouri, marched through St. Louis, and engaged Confederate forces at the small Battle of Fredericktown, which was their only combat in 1861. In February of 1862, Old Abe and Company marched southeast to capture New Madrid as part of the larger Battle of Island 10 in the Mississippi River. After capturing New Madrid, Eagle Company took up positions in trenches along the Mississippi River in Mount Pleasant, Missouri, where they later took part in action resulting in the capture of 4,500 Confederate prisoners in April 1862. Finding food for Old Abe could sometimes be difficult. A regular source of food was chicken, preferably live and taken from some Confederate sympathizer commonly called a secesh farmer. Old Abe's diet also consisted of fish, squirrel, and rabbit. Old Abe's mealtimes provided some spectacle for the soldiers and public alike. One spectator wrote that, quote, If any live chickens are to be found, he is sure to pounce on one, seizing it with one claw and hobbling off on the other with the aid of his wings, end quote. While attempting to purchase a chicken for Old Abe from a semi-unionist in LaGrange, Tennessee, the farmer offered instead to give the soldiers a guinea hen, under the condition that the hen and the eagle be made to battle first. The soldiers agreed, and soon a crowd gathered to watch Old Abe fight a guinea hen. It's unlikely that anyone expected the guinea hen to win, but because they are larger and more aggressive than a regular chicken, the fight seemed promising. After sizing each other up for a moment, Old Abe moved to attack, 
but was stopped when the guinea hen let out a loud squawk and ran. Old Abe paused for a moment, as the squawk of a guinea hen was totally new to him. Old Abe attacked again, but again the guinea hen squawked and ran. Perhaps to the surprise of the soldiers, the guinea hen proved to be too quick for the bald eagle, and managed to evade every attack, until finally the hen found a hole in the foundation of a building, and was safe at last. Though often tethered to keep him from flying away, Old Abe did on a few occasions manage to escape and soar freely. Each time Old Abe flew away, a massive eagle hunt began, sometimes drawing much of the regiment after him. Rarely did Old Abe land on the ground, but usually on some chimneys or trees, requiring some daring soldier to go up after him. On at least one occasion, Old Abe was not reachable by climbing, and so had to be lured to the ground with the promise of a chicken dinner. From their victory at Island Number 10, Old Abe and Eagle Company marched 160 miles to the southeast to fight in the Siege of Corinth. There Old Abe once again saw combat during the Battle of Farmington, where Company Commander Captain Perkins was killed. It was also during this time that Old Abe lost another of his human companions, perhaps the one most dear to him. James McGinnis, who had cared for and carried him for the last year, fell sick and could no longer carry out his duties. The new company commander asked for volunteers to carry Old Abe, and Thomas J. Hill was selected to be the new Eagle Bearer. If Thomas Hill thought being the Eagle Bearer was going to be easy, he was badly mistaken. One time, when Old Abe had become entangled, probably in his tether, Abe tore into Thomas's face, with his talons doing serious damage. Tom nevertheless continued to serve as Eagle Bearer, and grew an affection for the eagle, though his tenure as eagle bearer was short. In August of 1862, Thomas Hill received a promotion, and was replaced as eagle bearer by David McLean. McLean noted that Old Abe definitely had his own personality. Old Abe was fond of bathing, and would sometimes take an hour to complete his bath routine. On long marches, he would get restless and try to fly away. Within the company, Old Abe had people he liked and disliked. Those he disliked could expect to feel his sharp talons if they got in his way, but McLean said he never once did fight his bearers. McLean also said that Old Abe knew the sound of the cheers from his own company and would let out a scream whenever his men cheered, but would ignore the cheers of other companies. McLean bore Old Abe into the battle at Iuka on September 19th and again at the Second Battle of Corinth on October 3rd and 4th, 1862. Eagle Company and the rest of the Wisconsin 8th came under heavy Confederate fire during a maneuver on October 3rd. Screaming from his perch, Old Abe was a particular target for the Confederates, and at some point, his tether was severed by a Confederate ball. Newspapers gleefully reported what happened next. Free from his perch, the venerable symbol of the states united, took wing and flew above the battle line, sparking courage in the breasts of the Union soldiers and fear into the hearts of the rebels. His survey of the battle thus completed, Old Abe flew to the rear, to be collected by his bearer. Though the story of Abe's flight helped make him a nationally famous bird, the newspapers embellished the event. According to McLean, Old Abe did fly off, but only some short distance before McLean himself recovered him. After the battle was over, Union forces learned that Old Abe had been a special target of the Confederates thanks in part to Major General Sterling Price who, upon learning of Old Abe's presence at the battle, told his men that, quote, that bird must be captured or killed at all hazards. I would rather get that eagle than capture a whole brigade or a dozen battle flags, end quote. Perhaps as much as he was loved by Unionists, Old Abe was hated by the Confederates. Commonly called the Yankee Buzzard, Old Abe also had a number of other unfriendly names, such as Crow, Heron, Wild Goose, and Turkey Buzzard. Sometime after the Second Battle of Corinth, someone took it upon themselves to ground Old Abe by cropping the feathers of one wing and his tail. It's not clear who did this, though McLean was ruled out as the culprit. For his part, McLean resigned his commission as Eagle Bearer and returned to the ranks as a rifleman. Luckily for Old Abe, he was still a very young eagle, and had three more years before his adult plumage would grow in. Nevertheless, men of all ranks commented that Old Abe just did not look like himself much to the embarrassment of Eagle Company. Edward Homiston became Abe's new bearer. 
On May 14, 1863, Old Abe, along with the rest of the 8th Wisconsin, captured the city of Jackson, the capital of Mississippi. In a dramatic and symbolic gesture, men of Eagle Company rushed to the Capitol building, where they tore down the Confederate flag and replaced it with the Stars and Stripes. Just over one week later, Old Abe and Eagle Company were back along the Mississippi River, this time at Vicksburg. There, on May 22nd, they participated in a deadly bayonet charge on the well-defended Confederate positions on the north end of the city. Old Abe went into the thick of the battle, but neither he nor Holmiston suffered any wounds. After the battle, an examination of Abe found that he had lost a few feathers to flying bullets, but nothing more. So deadly were the assaults on Vicksburg that the dead and dying lay in the hot summer sun and quickly began to decay and stink. So bad was the smell, the Confederates offered a ceasefire to allow the Union to collect the dead and wounded, something General Grant reluctantly did. In 1864, Old Abe and his company were up for furlough. General Sherman requested they forgo immediate furlough to participate in the Red River campaign that spring. They agreed, and Old Abe fought on, through skirmishes and battles across the South between March and June 1864. On June 19th, Old Abe, along with 240 Wisconsin veterans, returned home on furlough. Old Abe was a figure of fascination at each place they stopped along the way home. Upon returning to Eau Claire, Abe and his company were treated royally, with gun salutes, feasts, and parades. After a furlough of only one month, Old Abe was back at the front lines in Tennessee and Mississippi, where on August 13, 1864, he was present at the Battle of Hurricane Creek, a Union victory. This was to be his last battle. In September 1864, the enlistment of the original Eau Claire men was up, and so too was Abe's. On September 26, Old Abe, along with the surviving veterans of Eagle Company and the 8th Wisconsin, paraded down the streets of Madison with great fanfare. Later that day in the office of the governor, Company Captain Victor Wolfe presented and gifted the Eagle to the state of Wisconsin, who fought bravely and proudly for Wisconsin and the Union. The state quartermaster took Old Abe into care, with assurances that he would be well cared for. Old Abe's service in the United States Army was at an end, but his life was far from over. Wisconsin established an Eagle Department, which included special facilities and a custom bathtub, something Old Abe no doubt relished. In peace as in war, Old Abe benefited from a dedicated caretaker, Old Abe's fame continued after the war, and his image was used to fundraise for the benefit of wounded veterans in the years after the Civil War. In 1876, Old Abe went on tour as part of the American Centennial Celebration, and was a big hit with exposition goers at the Centennial Exposition in Philadelphia. Four years later, Old Abe was present with tens of thousands of Union Army veterans at the Grand Army of the Republic National Convention. In 1881, fire broke out in the basement of the Wisconsin State Capitol, near where Old Abe was housed. The fire consumed paints and solvents, putting off noxious fumes which filled Old Abe's aviary. Though he survived the immediate fire, Abe was left sickened, and after lingering for a month, Old Abe died in the arms of his caretaker, George Gillis. He was 20 years old. Old Abe's body was preserved by a taxidermist and exhibited in the Grand Army of the Republic Hall at the Wisconsin State Capitol. There he sat proudly until 1904, when once again fire broke out at the Capitol building. This time, though, Old Abe did not escape the flames, and only a few of his feathers survived his destruction. Though Old Abe's body was gone, his legacy was alive and well in Wisconsin. Back in 1865, Jerome Case founder of the J.I. Case Equipment Company in Racine, incorporated Old Abe into his company's logo. Case kept Old Abe on the logo for over a century until 1969 when they adopted a new logo. At Eau Claire Memorial High, the students are known as the Old Abes. In Racine, at Case High School, they are called the Eagles. In the Wisconsin State Assembly Hall, a replica of Old Abe sits above the representatives a watchful reminder of what it costs to preserve timeless American values. At the War Memorial in Vicksburg, Mississippi, Old Abe graces the top of the Wisconsin Monument. In September 1921, the 101st Headquarters Division 
was reconstituted as part of the Army Reserves in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. The 101st Division existed in Wisconsin for 20 years, during which time they were endowed with the name the Screaming Eagles, in honor of Old Abe and the men who had fought under him. Since 1942, Old Abe has graced the shoulders of tens of thousands of American soldiers across the world. People have often wondered if Old Abe was a male or female bald eagle. For decades, people debated. In articles written about Old Abe before 2016, some writers referred to Old Abe with only female pronouns. But the debate was scientifically settled in 2016, when DNA taken from Abe's surviving feathers was analyzed, proving forever that Old Abe was in fact a male.